Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Welcome to Tract and Truth Tuesday. That's the title we give to each and every one of our Tuesday broadcast here at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm going to set aside our study in the book of Titus for today. And today my Bible is open to a very familiar passage, John chapter 4, Jesus with the woman at the well. I'm going to be reading one verse in just a moment, a verse that speaks about the fields being white and ready for harvest. It's a verse spoken by Jesus. It's a verse designed to encourage and prompt God's people to tell the gospel. And that's one of my head today, but I want to lead into that by telling you a story. I want to start the story. I'm going to finish it then after I make a little bit of advertising about our gospel tracts. But here's how the story begins. It goes way back to 1795. That's even before I was born. In 1795, a British diplomat came to a village in Burma, the country you call Myanmar now, near the capital city of Rangoon. The people living there, many of them were from the Karen tribe. Well, the diplomat was a white man, and the Karen people thronged around him, and they began to ask themselves this question, is this the white brother we've been waiting for? Well, the diplomat was surprised, and he began to ask about who this white brother was. The people told him that their forefathers taught them that one day a white brother would come and bring with him the book. Sadly, the diplomat said no, he knew nothing about any book. Later on on the visit, one of the Karen leaders gave a speech there to the British diplomats, and in that he explained what the Karen people had been taught by their forefathers. You see, the Karen people and the white people, he said, had once come from two brothers. These brothers both had the book. But the Karen brother lost his book, and his descendants did not have the book. The white brother kept his book, and the people that were born to him became righteous people. They were now what the the Karen people called the guides to God. The book that would bring that they would bring to them would tell them of the true God, the God whose name that they pronounced it was Yahweh. Yahweh. You and I know that name as Yahweh. My friend, would you like to hear how this story ends? You hang on. I'm going to be glad to tell you the story. Dear friend, Bible Tract Echoes is the radio arm of a ministry called Bible Tracts Incorporated. That word tracts is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, a gospel tract. Now, a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation as told to us in the Word of God. Jesus came to bring us the good news of salvation in himself. The gospel message is about Christ. It's about Jesus, what he accomplished at Calvary, what he accomplished when he died, was buried, and rose again from the dead. He died to pay for our sins. He rose from the dead to prove he could give us everlasting life. It proved that he was truly God in flesh and friend. He is the message. He is the good news for sinners. All of our tracks point to Christ. I've got one of our gospel tracks here in my hand right now. It's entitled Born Again. Born Again. What this gospel tract does is lay out with really great clarity and great simplicity what it means to be born again, what it is not to be born again is not a religious turning over of a leaf or doing good works. To be born again means you must have a spiritual birth. We all know about a physical birth, but we need to have a spiritual birth, a heavenly birth, a birth that gives us eternal life. 
Now, friend, here's a great track, Born Again. It's so clear. You'll like it. You'll love to pass it along. It's beautiful. It is a beautiful track. At the end of the broadcast, my announcer is going to give to you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Plan to do it. Get a piece of paper to jot down one of the communication methods. Please do that today. I want you and I to fulfill the verse I'm about ready to read. Now, if you cannot stay to the end of the broadcast, then just go to our website, which is Bible tracksinc.org. Well, the verse that's before me here out of the gospel of John chapter four says this, say not ye that there are yet four months and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the field for they are white already to harvest. That's what Jesus said. Well, let me come back to my story. Well, it was 22 years after that speech was there that took place back in 1795. 22 years later, a man named Adoniram Judson sailed to Burma, to Myanmar, and began missionary work. He came there, and with him he brought the book about Yahweh, the Bible. It took Adoniram Judson seven years before he ever saw his first convert, the first one to receive Christ as Savior. For those seven years, almost every day, the Karen people would walk by Mr. Judson's home singing hymns about Yahweh. Even though the people were very much steeped in Buddhism, they sang these hymns. The people had no idea that the white man in this house, that he had the book that their forefathers had spoken about. Well, one day, a man named Ko came to Judson's house looking for work. Now, you got to know that Mr. Ko was a thief and a murderer. He had killed at least 30 men. Well, Judson hired him, and Cole began to work there in the house. Well, as he worked every day, Cole heard Judson teach from this book, that lost book. And suddenly, he realized, Cole realized that what was going on here. Cole listened and realized this was the book that the forefathers told them about, about Yahweh. And Cole became a follower of Yahweh, Jesus Christ. He began telling the Karen people that the book, this white man, and the book from this white man, it had come. After that, wherever Judson went, and also Coe, you see, Coe became a preacher of the gospel. Wherever Judson or Coe ever went, they would be thronged by people, and they would see entire villages respond to the gospel in one day. Ed Ira Judson has always been lifted up as a great hero of the faith. Uh, no matter what your denomination label is, if you're a person and your church loves the Bible, you're going to love Adoniram Judson. He's a hero. He is exactly that. Oh, he endured great hardships. He endured pain. He endured actual torture there in Burma, in Myanmar. Yet, a huge harvest of souls came to Christ through his work. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why? Why was he so effective? Why? Because friend God had prepared the hearts of the Karen people. Judson had no clue about the teaching of the forefathers. He didn't know it. He had no clue that the soil to receive the gospel had been prepared by God. He had gone there to preach the gospel. But God had gone years, decades before Judson and prepared hearts. But then, like the woman at the well that the story here in John 4 comes from, like that woman, one seemingly social outcast. It was this woman married multiple times in John 4. It was a man named Ko who was a murderous thief in the story here that I'm relating to you. It was through these outcasts. They come they hear, they believe the gospel. Then that one former outcast becomes the catalyst which sees hundreds and hundreds come to receive Jesus Christ as Savior. Why do I tell you this story? I tell you this story so you will know that God has always been and God continues to be at work in our world. He is preparing the soil in the hearts and the lives of people. 
Oh, yeah, most of the time, God prepares the hearts. One heart here, one heart there, one heart in Minnesota, a heart over there in Iowa, a heart in New York, Pennsylvania, uh, Florida, uh, Illinois, wherever the case may be. But God's preparing hearts, making them ready for the gospel seeds to be planted. Today, you and I are playing the role of Adoniram Judson. Now, that may seem a humbling thing to you. It sure does to me. But we are playing the role of Adoniram Judson in the life of some people whose hearts God has prepared. The problem is that Adoniram Judson didn't know whose hearts was prepared. He didn't know that Karen people had been prepared by God. I don't know the people that I'm going to meet whose heart is prepared by God. You won't know either. All we can do, though, is be prepared to share the gospel with everyone we meet. That's the Great Commission. How do we do that? We give them a gospel track like this one, Born Again. We give them the blessing and just place a blessing on their life in Jesus' name. We tell them of God's love and grace to them. We tell them of the great hope of eternal life that we have found in Jesus Christ. There's great power in your and my personal testimony of receiving and walking with Christ. Today, I tell you that you and I are Adoniram Judson in someone's life. Oh, we'll never have books and biographies written about us, but for that one soul that we are used of by God to see the gospel seed planted and they come to faith in Christ will be as critical and as important a person in their life as Adoniram Judson is in the life of so many thousands of people hundreds of years ago there in the country of Burma. My friend, would you get some tracks from us? Would you go with the gospel? The fields are white unto harvest. The trouble is You and I want to see the whiteness of the fields first, and that's not the way it works. We just go by faith that God has prepared the gospel seed. If you're listening today, my friend, and you are a church attender, you go and you go, well, pardon the phrase, you go religiously, and when you go, you feel good. You may go to a church where they do a lot of ornate ritual things. You may go to a church where they don't. But whenever you go, you feel good. But then your feeling kind of wanes once this church service is over. And for a few hours later, you're back feeling the same way again. You're going to the wrong place to have your eternal needs met. A church is a great place, especially if it preaches the gospel, opens the Bible and preaches it. But the feeling you're looking for, the, 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 the feeling that meets the deepest need in your soul is coming from the person of Jesus Christ. You can't find it in a church service. You have to find it when you, with a broken and contrite heart, bow your heart before God and say, God, I am the sinner for whom Jesus died. I am the sin-stained soul that I need cleansed by the blood of Christ. I'm the one that needs eternal life that I can have because Jesus is alive from the dead. Give me eternal life today. Do that, my friend, please. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. Again, our phone number is 309 828 6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.